Hello chemistry students. Today we're going to be talking about stoichiometry and stoichiometry is the blending of the balanced chemical equation with the mole concept. Okay, so we're going to just start off with an equation here and we're going to first of all balance it. Okay, so last chapter the number was kind of given to you and in this chapter you're just going to be given a, a chemical equation. You're going to be asked to solve for either the reactants or the products. Okay, so if we start out with nitrogen plus hydrogen making say ammonia. Okay. Uh, first of all we know these are both gases. We know all three of these are gases. Okay. So we can go ahead and put our state of matter here. And we notice these two um, are diatomic molecules. Okay. That means they're going to bond with themselves. So we're going to put um, the two beside those and we know that they're gases. Okay. And now we can make um, some inferences about this after we balance it because um, everything would be equal. Okay, so we have three hydrogen over here when we have two here. So this is an odd number, so I'm going to put a two here. That gives me six hydrogens. If I put a three here, now I have six hydrogens, two nitrogens, two nitrogens, and I am ready to go. Okay, so from this balanced chemical equation, now we have the same amount of mass on both sides. So if we were to calculate the molar mass of this half of the equation, we have two nitrogen, which is like 28, and we'd have um, six hydrogen, which would be another six. So we'd be looking at um, 24, uh, no, 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 34, okay, on this side. And if we added this up, since we have two nitrogen and we have six hydrogen, it was going to be around 24 as well. So we have the same amount of mass on both sides now that we've balanced it. And this is very useful for us in the lab, okay? So... Um, I'm just going to kind of talk about interpreting this in terms of atoms and molecules uh, just so uh, we can move on to that next step that's really impo important called the mole ratio. But this is kind of a review. So we can say um, here we know we have uh, two nitrogen atoms. Okay. Uh, we would say that we had one molecule of nitrogen. Okay, because this is going to be a covalent compound, so one molecule of N2. Uh, we could say that we know we have one mole of N2, and this one's this is new. These numbers out here in front, the coefficients equals the amount of moles. Okay, so let's um, go ahead and say equals the amount of moles. So this is new, and this is, you know, what this is going to do is it's going to give us more conversion factors, which is exciting. Okay, so uh, here, since there is nothing, we just have one mole of N2. And we know that we have around 28 grams of N2 here. Okay, now this one, we have 3 times 2, so we have 6 atoms of hydrogen. And we have three molecules, right? Because that three out in front means molecules, and now it also means moles of H2. Uh, so we have three moles of H2. And there's going to be about six grams in this one. Okay, now let's go over to ammonia. Here we're going to have two nitrogen atoms. Okay, because it's always going to be equal. Oops. Two atoms of nitrogen and six atoms of hydrogen. And we're going to have two molecules of ammonia. And we're going to have two moles of ammonia. And then we're probably going to have somewhere around 34 grams of um, this compound, which these together would make 34 grams. And this is where um, it would say equals, or this is where the reaction took place. Okay, and these two are going to be equal on both sides. And that also goes right along with that law of conservation of mass that we learned about in chapter. Um, 11. Just meaning that um, both they're going to be equal on both sides. And now you can see that 
um, atoms are going to be equal on both sides. And now we have a really um, good basis to do some calculations. Okay, so piggybacking off of this right here, this is really important in this chapter, the idea of these coefficients um, equaling the amount of moles of that um, given substance. Okay, so let's talk about um, what this does for us. Okay, so if we have N2 plus H2, and there's 3 here, and we make two NH3 molecules. Write this out real quick again. You guys can still use the same one if you want. Um, now we can make these um, what is called a mole ratio. And what a mole ratio is, it's a conversion factor that is made from a balanced chemical equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and write out these mole ratios, which are also going to be con conversion factors. And uh, so this first one, remember, since there's nothing, in it, we assume that it's 1. So we're going to have 1 mole of N2. And we could say equals 2, or we can, you know, because whatever is on top and bottom of a ratio is equal in terms of chemistry, is equal to the 3 moles of H2 gas. And that's because since everything is equal, we can set everything equal to um, the other. And of course, this can be flipped. We can do 3 moles of um, H2 is equal to 1 mole of N2. Okay, so those are interchangeable. Um, then we can go to the next one. Okay, it's almost like distributing um, out what's going to be equal to what. So now we could do 1 mole of N2 is equal to 2 moles of NH3. Okay, and then of course we could flip that. We could do 2 moles of NH3 is equal to 1 mole of N2. And then we're going to have one more here, um, which is the 3 moles of H2 being equal to the 2 moles of NH3, and of course we can flip that. Now, on top of the already um, ratios or conversion factors that we have, now for every problem you have at least six or possibly eight more conversion factors okay, to choose from to get to where you want to be. So wherever you're starting off your given number to whatever you want to be. So now we could say if we have 85 grams of this as our product, say that's how much we want, how much hydrogen and nitrogen do we need to get 85 grams of this? We can calculate that now, okay? And so to do that, we would have to use um, one of these two here to try to calculate to go from moles of a compound down to moles of an element, okay? And that's what these are called. They're mole ratios, and they're the conversion factor that is moles of a compound um, to moles of an element. Okay, and these are, this is just another vehicle that we can add to that one mole is over that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now we can use that with this. Okay, so I'm just adding another conversion factor, or a lot, but one concept of how you can make them. And that one mole is equal to molar mass of an element or a compound. And then the one mole is equal to the 22.4 liters. Okay, So let's go ahead and do a easy example problem here so that maybe you can see where we're going. Okay, so let's do... One. So let's just stay with that same equation, just because that's what you guys are already used to. Okay. And we are moving into H3. We need two of those, right? Okay. So let's say, let's go ahead and use that example. We have 85 grams of this NH3. So that's our given number. 
And I, no matter if it's a word equation, if it says you have 85 grams of ammonia, how much hydrogen would you need to um, make 85 grams of the NH3? So that's what it would say. It would say how much hydrogen would you need to produce in, um, it's probably say ammonia. Ammonia. It produced 85 grams of ammonia. Okay. So this would be our question. It might give you the equation or it might not, depending. You might have to write it out uh, the word from the word equation. So here, 85 grams of NH3 would be our starting. Then here we would put grams of NH3. So here we would have to use the molar mass because the only thing that goes in front of grams is molar mass. So we said that would be about 34. Okay. Uh, so that was equal to one mole of NH3. This is where labeling, I kept telling you the label last time. This is why. Now there's two moles of NH3. So we know that moles of NH3 has to go on bottom. Okay. So now how do we get two hydrogen? And we use one of those mole ratios from the last slide. So the two moles of NH3 is equal to the three moles of H2. Okay? And uh, it says how much hydrogen. It didn't tell us what, but from here we could say how much um, hydrogen in grams. We could say in atoms. We could say we could calculate anything from here because now we have the mole. So we could just calculate moles of hydrogen and stop there. Or we could go one more and say one mole of hydrogen is equal to, um, uh, let's say, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay. Molecules. Of H2. Okay. And so we do this. We would take 85 grams. We would then divide that, because it's on bottom, by 34. Then we would have to multiply it by 3. Then divide that by 2. And then multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so let me pull up my calculator. Let's try to do this. So we do 85 divided by 34. 2.5 times 3 equals divided by 2 equals times 6.02 equals. So we get 22.75 times 10 to the 23rd. Of course, we want to move this over 1. So we do 2.2, 2.3, because we only need two sig figs. 2.3 times 10. So if we make this number smaller, we have to make this one bigger the 24th, and this would be molecules of H2 gas, okay? And there's our answer. So now we know we have a lot of molecules of H2 gas reacting with nitrogen gas to make 85 grams, okay? And then, of course, we could also uh, solve for grams of hydrogen, but that would be in our next video. Okay, so this was kind of a big introduction overview, and now we're going to get a little smaller and, and look at um, things a little closer. Okay, have a good day.